Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this cute dragonfly ear cuff. Now if you like my tutorials and you want to support me in any way, you can always check out my shop where I sell jewelry kits and tutorials. Otherwise of course you can like, share and subscribe and there's also a super thanks button below the video. But if you want to learn how you can make this cute ear cuff for yourself, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now I'm using a regular round silver coated copper wire in a 0.8mm gauge. And then we just need a couple of beads, so I'm using an 8mm and a 6mm in this case. But you could easily change that out for say a 6mm and a 4mm if you want it to be smaller. But the beads that I'm using are some blue coated hematite gemstone rounds. Of course you can use whatever you want to. Now we just need a few tools as well, so I'm using some flush cutters here so we can of course cut our wire. Tweezer nose pliers to help manipulate the wire. I'm using some round nose pliers just for a single loop that we need to make. Six step bell making pliers to help make the ear cuff pat. And finally I just like to use a ruler just to help get things as symmetrical as possible. Now, like usual, you'll be able to find the material list and useful links in the description box down below. Otherwise, let's get it all ready and let's get started. Then we need to cut a couple of lengths of our wire. So first of all, I have a length of about 35 centimeters and just make sure there's no kinks or bends in it. And then I have a shorter length here of about 15 centimeters. So first we need to grab our long length of wire here and what we need to do is find the midpoint. You can just measure that and then I'm gonna place my round nose pliers on the midpoint there pretty much towards the tip because we just need to make a tiny little loop then I'm just going to bring the wire around to make the loop so we end up having a full circle like that now this loop literally doesn't have to be very big because all we need is for our short length of wire to be able to go through it so as long as you can do that and also it's not too big so it's too loose in there then that's absolutely fine and then from here we're going to get straight into shaping the wings so I'm just going to flip it so the loop is facing away from me and then I'm gonna have my tweezer nose pliers handy and what I also like to do is use a ruler just to help make it as symmetrical as possible so what I'm gonna do is use that loop as the midpoint and then just work on one side at a time I'm gonna measure one centimeter from that loop out in one direction and then I can see where I need to grip the wire so like that so keep hold of that and then I'm going to bend the wire against the pliers and bend it upwards so we create a little bend like that so you can easily use different measurements than I'm doing so make it larger or smaller then we're going to get my ruler in again and then on this length that we just bent I want to measure about five millimeter from the bend so place the wire on the ruler and then you can see where you need to grip the wire so keep hold of that and then again I'm going to bend the wire against the pliers and this time I'm coming back in the direction of the other side basically and in towards the middle again and once I've kind of created a little bit of a sharper bend there I'm going to start grabbing the length further out because I want to create more of a curve on this side so that's going to be the top side of the wing so just gently bring it down having that curve in place and I'm bringing it behind the loop and also staying on this side of the loop so it looks something like that now we just need to repeat the same thing on the other side so again you can measure from that loop and then out the other length just place your pliers on that one centimeter mark then bend the wire against the pliers upwards in the same direction as the other side and try and get as similar an angle as possible and from there we measure five millimeters from the bend we just made place your pliers on the wire and then bend the wire against the pliers towards the other side there and once we have a bit of a sharp bend at the top then start to bring the wire down grabbing it a bit further out so we create a bit more of a curve on the top side and again I'm coming down behind the loop and staying on this side so when we look from the front it looks a little something like that now of course you can adjust anything you need to just to make sure the sides are as symmetrical as possible but then we need to move on and do the bottom wings so again just one at a time I'm just gonna smooth them out and start getting a bit of a curve into it underneath here but in the way that it kind of starts to go back upwards something like that and just repeat the same on the other side and then what I just like to do from here is grab my pliers and place them where I want the bend to be and what I'm doing is kind of using the top wing as a way to measure so I'm basically using that very first bend that we made and just placing my pliers just below that and then I'm going to bend the wire against the pliers again make sure the wire goes behind everything so it comes on the back where the loop is just bring that all the way until we get a bit of a sharper bend 
and also a bit of a curve on the top side and then this is basically going to be the bottom wing and this time I'm just letting it come on the top side of the loop there of course we just need to do the same on the other side so grab onto the wire below we have the bend on the top wing push the wire against the pliers so we have a bit of a sharper bend and then start to bring this further around now we then need to grab our short length of wire and we need to put it through the initial loop that we made and just make sure that all the wire is then on the back here so it's just the loop at the front and the rest of the wires that are crossing back and forth are behind it and just place it in about the middle then what we need to do is basically start to fasten this in place so put your fingers on your wings that you made to make sure they stay in place as we now move these lengths what I'm going to do is take one at a time and bring it in between the short length we just added and the top wing where it's naturally coming out towards and then towards the front there and make sure you keep hold of everything so it keeps its shape then bring it down over the top of the middle towards the other side of that short wire and then just back out towards the back there and then do the same with the one on the other side so put your thumb on everything to make sure they keep their shape bring it up in between the short length and the top wing out to the front now cross over in the middle there so that's crossing over the other length that we just did which kind of creates a bit of a cross where the body is and then on the other side of the short length, push it down between that and the bottom wire on that side. And again, just out towards the back. Now you'll probably find that the wings have moved a little bit, but don't worry too much about that because we can always adjust that. But then what we're gonna do is just leave these lengths at the back for now, because I just wanna finish off the actual dragonfly itself. So we also need to bring in our beads and have them handy. So I'm just gonna start with a large one and I'm gonna put that as the bottom bead, so below, the bottom wings there on the short wire of course and then just push it all the way up to sit as tight against the wings as you can now what we need to do is then bend this wire that's coming out from below the bead right up against it and it doesn't matter what direction you do it in and then you want to keep pushing this wire around the bead to basically create a circle all the way around Make it as tight to the bead as possible. You can always take off the wings if you feel that they're a little bit in the way. But then bring it back up and when you run into the bottom part there, just bring it underneath itself and then over to the other side, crossing in front of the short wire that's coming straight up. And then we literally just want to finish this off. So I'm going to push it around that short wire that's coming out from the bead and basically just wrap it to the other side and then just make sure the wrap gets nice and tight. We can then go in and cut off the excess and you just want to cut it so when you're left with the wire that's left here, the end can get pushed basically right up against itself so it's not going to be sticking out anywhere and catching or scratching on anything. And then we can just push the wings down here and just make sure to push them nice and tight. So this is the bottom part of the body. Now we basically need to repeat the same thing on the top. So this is where I'm going to use the small bead and then you just want to push them together so we make sure everything's it's nice and tight. And like I said, don't worry about the wings being a little bit not how you want them to sit because we can adjust that. So make sure to have it pushed all the way down and then repeat the same thing by pushing the wire that's coming out from the hole in the bead there against the bead and continue to bring it all the way around tie up against it and we'll get back to the top just go behind itself and then continue till we get back down here to where we can then just bring the wire in between the bead and the body and then just wrap it around the back a bit so this is basically doing the exact same thing as we did with the bottom one but of course now we do have a little bit more wire and everything in the way but just bring it as far down as you can get it. Then we want to cut off the excess and then just make sure to push that in place. And that is then what you could call the head and we basically have the dragonfly itself finished. And then we can just use the wires that are coming out of the back to make our ear cuff with. And what we want to do first of all is cross these over to the opposite side. So I'm just taking the left one in this case, bringing it over to the right and the right one, bringing that over to the left so they're coming more straight out towards the sides and just smooth them out if you need to. Now I'm then just going to bring in my ruler again here because I like to make sure I get the right measurement for the ear cuff. So what I'm going to do is again the midpoint is where they cross over 
and I'm just going to measure about one centimeter from that point out on one side first and then I'm also just going to take my six step bell making pliers and I'm going to be using the third largest step then I just want to place those pliers on that one centimeter mark and then we can bend the wire around and have it come back towards the middle there and then just let it cross over to the other side and then we just need to repeat the same on the other side so you can just measure from the midpoint to see where you need to place your pliers and then bring the wire around now i'm bringing both lengths downwards and then as they cross back over each other here they're both pointing more upwards because that's what i wanted to do for when i want to finish them off and of course you can make this ear cuff pad whatever size you want to that's going to fit you best now to finish these off what we need to do is just be able to secure them in place somewhere so i'm just going to grab my tweezer nose pliers and i want to grab basically right where they cross over each other on the back and in this case i'm just taking the one that's towards the right but I'm going to bend that straight up so it basically ends up coming up towards the head and then the other one I'm going to do the same thing so grab it where they're crossing over and start bending it straight up and that's going to just come up slightly on the other side of the head there because what I'm then going to do is use the top part of the bottom wings you're going to be able to see there's just a little bit of gap there we can wrap these lengths around and secure them off in place so you can just bring them down between the head and that top wing and just bring it as far down to the front as you can and just do the same with the other one we can then go in and cut off the excess and then the short little ends we have left what we can do is basically just make sure to tuck them in and fasten them by tightening them around the wire on the wing and that's also the least intrusive for the design so you can't really see where it's finished off so you can just bend the end slightly downwards more before you then squeeze it tight. And then what we have left is to shape the ear cuff pad because obviously right now this is not gonna attach to anything. So we need to again use the six step bell making pliers and I'm just gonna grab on to the very outer edge of one side at a time. And again, I'm just using the same size and then you just wanna gently start curling this inwards. So it gets a bit of a hook shape when you look from this angle. And of course, we're only doing it to the actual cuff part, not the wings. And then just repeat the same with the one on the other side. Just gently curl it inwards and basically just curl them into the point where they're gonna fit nicely as an ear cuff and obviously be able to sit on your ear. So we want to make sure there's a bit of a gap between them, but that's not too big, but also not too small. So something a bit like that. And looking from another angle, you can see they're kind of hooking on both sides, but towards each other. So this is now going to fit on your ear. And just to show you how it looks on my spare ear here. So we have these little hook pads that just hook on either side of that part of your ear. And it sits nicely there. And of course, you can always tighten it a little bit if you need to. But then you have your finished ear cuff ready to wear. And you can easily make these in different sizes if you want a bit more of a delicate one. You can just use smaller beads and maybe smaller measurements. Or you could even make a larger one. So I really hope you enjoy the tutorial for how to make this cute dragonfly ear cuff. Now I actually have a playlist of different ear cuff designs which this is going to be added to as well. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box down below. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.